our next speaker today. So we have Tammy Heap. Now she is a home birth midwife in New Zealand and has been, a midwife, has been in midwifery practice for 10 years. Before that she was a registered nurse. Tammy has been a trustee board member on the National Home Birth Victoria Association since 2014 and won the Birthplace Matters campaign international category in 2017 for Home Birth Midwife of the Year. During her time as a midwife, Tammy has coordinated a group of pregnancy centres in her region and has a strong passion for women's rights in health as well as reducing birth intervention trends. So welcome to you, Tammy. everyone. Hello everyone. Well, welcome to the International Virtual Day of the Midwife. Um, it's great to see you here. This is my first ever time presenting, so yeah, naturally the, the nerves are a little bit there. Can everyone hear me okay? Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so I'm a home birth um, practicing midwife here in New Zealand, and as um, Karen Gilliland was discussing earlier in New Zealand, we practice generally under the continuity um, partnership mod with, um, midwifery model of care, um, which you know globally the rhetoric research supports that continuity of care model is the key to best health outcomes for women and women and babies across their lifespan. There's a, a thing about coming back to why we're talking about this too. Um, there is a, a great New Zealand um, pre presenter, Nathan Wallace, on the brain development. Um, and he talks about how in the last 30 years of research and development on the human brain, we have learned more than in the last 300 years. Um, and it is talking about, he talks about how it's neurologically and biologically impossible to, impossible, um, to, to underestimate how much we've learned in the last um, 10 to 20 years of research and just the impact on what we can do for the human brain and women, babies and people throughout their whole lifespan. Okay. The mother midwife diet, there's no tool for development more effective than the empowerment of women. Empowered women who feel confident in birth will, will often call, sorry, will call for a midwife well into established labour. Postnatally, challenges are often reduced, including with breastfeeding. This equates to increased job satisfaction for the midwife and lower work-related hours for each woman over the maternity period. Within New Zealand and our continuity model of um, care, we stay with women from the beginning of pregnancy, right throughout labour and birth, and in the postnatal period as a lead maternity caregiver. So we um, join up with a lady, she cho chooses us right at the beginning of pregnancy, and we've got amazing opportunities the whole way through um, that you know, care partnership with women and you know, with babies and creating a, a really happy family and things like that afterwards. I love being a midwife and have, have never dread my phone ringing or feel like I wanna leave midwifery. I feel a big reason for this is right from the start I've practiced as a start as a means to go on. Sustainability in midwifery is an issue worldwide. With an average length of career of less than 10, 10 years with burnout being the highest reason for leaving. In New Zealand, our rate has gone from six years on average to many areas being on average as low as two years. And that's quite concerning. The last, so 30 years ago, the average midwifery length of career was 10 years. And that is you know, quite concerning how much it has dropped in that you know, level of time. 
So what are the issues? Job satisfaction rates are significantly declining in midwifery. Inequality in pay, increased excessive workloads, staff shortages and issues of harass harassment, both from external and workplace cultures, have all been identified as causative factors for midwives leaving or co contemplating leaving midwifery. The impact of midwives leaving midwifery practice has both short and long-term significant repercussions. Fewer midwives mean larger workloads. Less time is available for midwives to support each other professionally, socially and emotionally. New graduate midwives may struggle to find varied mentorship and support during their first year of practice. Midwifery education, student midwives are increasingly both observing and feeling the workload extremes and negativity. Student midwifery retention and new applications are very much at risk. With the midwifery population aging, ongoing replenishment of the midwifery population is crucial. Women-centered care and physiological birth statistics are at risk of declining due to potential failure to weight pressures caused by high workloads. Intervention field, medical, medicalized births and the related increased birth traumas are all genuine causes for concern. So I'll go a little bit more in depth into this. Job satisfaction rates. When I first came out with um, into my midwifery practice, there, you know, there was a large amount of you know, midwives that talking to women as students, myself, and also as a new graduate, a lot of people found that everything, all, all the good outweighed the few, you know, the few things um, bad in that time. As Karen is, as well herself discussed earlier, the pay we do have a pay equity, you know, um, issues in New Zealand, and that has been, uh, you know, identified as a large uh, current situation that is being addressed, and we're looking forward towards the the, the budget and how things are going to help in that aspect um, this year. Increased excessive workloads. Within New Zealand, we have both current stresses within wards, particularly on hospital-based wards with very high acuity for core midwives. This um, entails a lot of midwives are looking up to with up to nine women on postnatal wards at any one given time. This can equate to very, you know, you know, concerns about you know postnatally, you know. Uh, are women, you know, getting that support and that with breastfeeding? Uh, you know, we have such a high, fantastic breastfeeding rate in the world for um, the initial leaving um, the hospital within that first um, 72 hours, as well as at the six week mark of continued breastfeeding and as the primary um, mode of feeding, and even the six months, you know, six month statistics down the track, we have qu um, quite good breastfeeding rates. A lot of um, midwives are voicing themselves that they feel that that they are unable to give that you know woman that you know really dedicated support with each feed um, for ensuring that women are you know feeling confident with the the breastfeeding and not um, you know, subsequently um, having to deal with issues down the track of things like. Um, breastfeeding, tenderness, mastitis, and, you know, the related issues that can sometimes go from not having that, you know, initial in-depth support in those first few days of life. Staffing shortages can also equate to ill health, you know, increased um, incidence of ill health in both uh, you know, staffing on the wards and women that are coming into the birthing unit as LMCs. Um, uh, on many instances within, you know, um, New Zealand and around the world, it is it is reported that a lot of midwives, um, both 
poor you know hospital midwives and women out in the community um, working as midwives are often being asked to offer increasing amounts of overtime um, and some women are going you know, up to less than one scheduled day off any every pay period and in some cases not receiving any days off at all so the we're looking at you know short um, eight hour relative you know, normal eight hour work days being increased up to 10 16 and sometimes double shifts with people coming back from immediately in the morning after finishing a nighttime shift and sometimes they're finishing you know after midnight so there's less than that eight hour um, sleep period um, per se. Within the rural community in New Zealand we have many pockets in New Zealand that now have no midwives in within a an area. This puts women you know, at a lack of being able to choose um, midwives and are having to travel very, very, very long distances, or there's actually no available access to midwives or even local birthing units that provide well a woman low risk care. Harassment is another one that is um, a an ongoing issue and it is linked often to you know um, workloads being high um, shortages in midwifery in general uh, resources um, there is the, the premises also that women um, sometimes are coming in with more comorbidities for uh, their pregnancy labor and you know postnatal needs requirements and care um, and sometimes the, the policies and things like that can be uh, a, a preempt for frustrations, you know, um, tired overworkers, um, and often, you know, there it's it's not just from um, financial resources and and things like that. Um, and that's a you know that there has been an increase in that. And we can, you know, often, as I'll discuss later, how we can, you know, do things to minimise that also. The impact of midwives leaving practice does definitely have an impact on our current new graduates um, and our future students. A lot of uh, midwives are when being asked by um, ladies out in the community who have an interest in midwifery you know it, some students are actually being put off training w at the expected time that they thought they were going to you know enter midwifery whether it be after they've completed their you know having their families so you know where women are putting their midwifery careers back by up to 10, 15 years as an example alone, or there are incidences or the, the voiced concerns that actually is this a sustainable career for myself and where do I see myself in 20 years after putting the, the, the time, the, the money that it costs and that, you know, into this. Women-centred care and physiological birth statistics. We midwives are excellent in providing well woman care to both low risk and higher risk women, but there is a decline in, as we can see, um, in the normal birth rates in many countries around the world. The cesarean section rate is increasing, induction rates are increasing, there is a stud, there was a study on, in the UK on birth trauma, birth trauma rates um, are on the increase in as much as up to 40% for women with first time pregnancies and births. And including in that study as well, it also talks about the impact on midwives and birth trauma and that midwives are increasingly be exposed and experiencing the impact with birth traumas themselves. And these are also a you know a genuine cause for concern in the rate that 
the first primary births are our most important birth that we want to make sure that we are not having subsequent uh, women with issues like postnatal depression and all of the ramifications that come out of that mentally as well as the physical issues such as the increasing rate of placenta accretors with cesarean sections and the comorbidities that can go along with these things. And then there's the impact as well on the child um, development and brain and connections with um, you know, their ongoing you know, lifespan development as well too. So here we say again, midwifery self-care in the unit. So I currently have um, you know, chatted with some midwives around the world as to what they find um, quite good both within New Zealand and you know, that works well overseas. Um, I haven't worked within the unit myself other than going in um, and as a midwife. And I used to have a, I come from a background of being a registered nurse and a, and a high acuity um, ward, so definitely understand the, the pressures of the workloads and that. Again, a lot of the midwives say that our continuity-based care with midwifery does definitely have a positive impact on women within the unit, even if they're coming in for things like induction under um, either the LMCs or whether they are indeed under um, admitted under the high-risk um, unit-based care. So the research still shows that women will still um, come out with better outcomes under our continuity, continued, sorry, partnership continuity model, model of care. For hospital and birthing unit midwives, there is a, a strong ideal to, as much as we like to help um, relieve you know, shortages, sickness and Ill, Ill illnesses, the research does show that the more we do overtime over and above uh, one shift per pay cycle, that we indeed put ourselves, as well as the units and other midwives and um, staff, at risk of themselves becoming ill, both physically and um, just exhaustion. And that as well can lead to um, errors in practice. So here, you know, um, avoid overtime more than once. It is a big ask, we know. Most units, whether it be primary birthing units, hospital units, you know, utilize your midwifery leaders, your charge midwives, your hospital coordinators um, as a valuable resource as well, not just for are you asking about um, things for what's happening on the unit, you know, have roster issues. There have often been um, times where you can actually um, call in your extra support. And many a time within my own nursing um, life, we often had, um, you know, charge midwives and team leaders coming off and you know, coming you know, off their home time and coming in to help relieve the, the staffing shortages when the pool of casual staff weren't unfortunately available or you know, in ill health themselves. So utilize, you know, utilize them. And that's the thing, you know, we all work together really well to help everyone feel satisfied and experience less illnesses, which in turn helps, you know, provide that great care for women. Take regular scheduled annual leave at least six monthly of two weeks. A, a lot of women will often only take a week annual leave and the research supports of at least two week blocks help to refresh, recharge and revitalize both the physical and the mental social aspect of our enjoyment and our satisfaction um, within our workspace. There's also um, a, a few other things that can um, be done just to make the daily the daily um, work life satisfying. Uh, women have also um, 
said that they feel more confident um, and feel like that relationship bond with a new midwife is actually quite strong, even than the presence of just the, the, the midwife at the beginning of a shift coming in and introducing herself and saying, what, what is your goals for today? Hi, my name is this, and I've read your birth plan. Just those simple acts alone can already actually make the, the woman feel a lot more at ease and develop that immediate connection and relationship with that midwife for that eight hours and also or, already immediately relax some of those apprehensions and extra potentials for anxieties, um, so extra ringing the bell and actually can in, you know, reduce um, the midwife's workload over that eight hours just by these simple things. The, the connection of coming in and personalising with that woman straight away rather than coming in and to do a task as a first instance, instance has a dramatic impact just for that eight hours, just for that woman, one woman alone, and can already ease up that day. Midwifery group practices. Yes, we don't really have the bedside handovers um, within our unit. I can't speak for other units um, around the country. I know that within nursing, there, we used to do it, um, and I can't really say whether that is a current practice, um, Lindell. Um, midwifery group practices and self-employed midwives. A lot of midwives, when they first go out, um, look at joining up practices. There, there are a lot of st structures, um, numbers, and um, you know ways of practicing that will each and you know suit that midwife, group, and area. There's, uh, there is a, a lot of things to take into consideration sometimes, such as traveling, um, area of coverage, is, um, particularly within home birth midwifery as well. Just um, so in this instance, two midwives might suit one group, six, eight, um, Yes, so that so that you know is individualized for um, each and every person. However, going into a midwifery practice that has this, where everyone ha shares that same philosophy, has been one of the big keys to um, that group sustaining their um, group and the midwife sustaining their practice. One common mistake that um, new graduates can sometimes fall into is the pressures of joining up a practice for the either gaining the case gaining the case load or um, area wise again too sometimes that can work but in the long term it has shown that for sustainability and job satisfaction that there are definitely negative um, sometimes outcomes with this um, and, and w midwives will often be leaving the practices faster or le you know, often changing their mode of midwifery practice whether it be from LMC um, care practice or, in, or the, into the hospital. Negotiating a time of system that best suits your practice. Um, a lot of midwives have found that having week about for weekends off, um, one evening a, a week suits them. Midwives that have lower caseloads, um, particularly ho um, home birth midwives, because they have that continuity of practice, a lot will find that they don't have that and don't or don't require the rigid um, you know, every second or third full weekend off, um, but negotiate uh, days off that best suit their events, um, life practices, and also um, doing a system that still enables that there's this, you know, within New Zealand we have two midwives for 
um, births and, and you know at the time of um, home birth. So again, too, this is going to you know vary quite differently for whether you're in a small a, a small rural practice that the midwives don't actually travel a great distance, or a large um, rural area, small but with um, a small number of midwives, or even urban areas, whether it is a small compact area or a a, um, a large area. Um, particularly in other countries as well, when you have policies and things that can dictate um, where women are or are not able to birth based on um, risk factors um, and things like that, or even indemnity insurances. So every um, country, again, has sometimes have, has their benefits that can be incorporated into how the practice will work or their limitations. So it's just finding that drive as to how that's going to go. Um, complementing each other with opportunities for short-term um, events has really um, shown to have a good collegial relationship with each other, that it makes the, the job on a day-to-day -day basis a lot more satisfying. A lot of women um, with families report that just the ability to be able to go on the spur of the moment to you know, an evening out with their husband or to events with their children um, or just things that sometimes being a, a LMC midwife practicing um, can be limited by the, the spur of the moment things really has um, been voiced to really have a great impact on just the, you know, the job satisfaction overall and the ability to maintain that sustainable um, balance between both personal and you know professional um, life and enjoyment and also to it helps relationships both within the work life and within personal home expectations from family and um, friends so it definitely has been shown to have really um, good um, you know impact um, and regular face-to-face -face meetings with your colleagues um, ideally at least two weekly if you can't do face to face too weekly, even doing things like Skype or Zoom um, or even phone meetings, um, it dis the, the presence has, has always shown that it is a lot more calming, soothing um, than the mode of emails, texts, and that as to you know the, the, the being present and just the presence with somebody that you're you know, familiar in it and enjoy a social, comfortable situation um, as, you know, with your work co colleagues kind of thing. It is a great time as well, too, to discuss um, cases and things in a, um, a short and positive way. But again, in that aspect, just limiting the amount of time that you actually spend on that in that um, time that you're together. And there's, me there's other things that you can um, find that really works for you as well too. Strategies that I've incorporated into my practice to achieve the satisfaction and state sustainability. Probably the, the work um, and personal life balance caseload for satisfaction. Um, I, I think again too, um, a start as a means to go on when I first went out as a, a new graduate midwife. Um, Realising what physically I needed financially um, for my own personal life and work life to maintain a, um, you know, keeping up to um, standards on my midwifery um, workload, education, um, practice side of things, personal life being able to, you know, just have that work balance, work life balance where there is the satisfaction and that not only myself loves my career, but also my my family particularly. Um, yeah, so the, in, in that aspect, I currently take um, two to three women um, per month um, while my children are young. Um, I have, um, when I first started out, I had a, a load of between four and six. Um, when I had it only um, one child and just have titrated that as I need. And that's helped with other aspects of life and looking at financials, um, I've probably become a lot more you know, sensible 
in some aspects. And I think we tend to find that we do better if we're looking over the whole aspects of um, our you know, well-being um, and how each can complement each other and sometimes how some tweak, tweaking of one thing um, can make it easier you know, in, in some aspects. And I do see myself as well later on when the children are older you know, going back into to full, um, you know, four to six, and I and going back to again changing how I was um, working then, um, as to you know how uh, the sustainability will continue as well in, in those modes. So you know, and that is you know it does it works um, quite well that way. I've noticed within my um, midwifery care of um, 10 years of practice that um, having international appointments of an hour plus or at least 45 minutes has shown that um, women often feel a lot more confident. Um, they know where they are themselves with their own health status a lot, both in pregnancy, birth and postnatally, which means they're uh, very empowered within themselves that they take a lot of the self-responsibility for their own care, keeping themselves well in emotional and physical aspects and not exposing themselves to um, unnecessary risks, you know, risky behaviours or um, things, you know, things like that. When it comes, I believe that and um, has shown that it's not just the birth experience it's itself that seems to show the satisfaction in both women, the babies, and um, myself. It is, you know, women are going away from appointments without any questions unanswered. And often for the birth themselves, they know where they are. Um, they often know where they are themselves in labour. So right from the beginning, you know, um, at that first antenatal appointment. It's really, you know, setting up that self-responsibility of, you know, what are you going to learn over, you know, the time period of coping strategies to enable you to have the best birth, you know, the best birth, the shortest birth, the most comfortable birth. And, you know, the subsequently as well, you know, afterwards, how are you um, preparing yourself for making that, you know, next six weeks? You know the the best it can be, and the you know the less tiring the support systems having them in place. In in that as well for birth, I often find that women are ringing me much later in labour um, by um, the way they're feeling. So in you know antenatally, we often discuss you know if you're feeling these sensations and feeling these waves of contractions kind of this often. This is probably you're probably about this kind of amount of centimetres dilated. You know, you may be experiencing this, you may be experiencing that, and that can help to allay their anxieties, which in turn m enables the um, ladies to feel that they are doing quite well where they are at the moment, and they often don't need the pre immediate presence of midwives, um, you know, quite early in the birth. And postnatally, breastfeeding. <laughs> You just got about uh, a few minutes. Yeah. So, and postnatally, breastfeeding um, and relationships, both with their own partners and the babies, um, definitely sets um, up a really good paradigm, um, both you know, immediately and into the, the future. Again, too, um, uh, there is the choice whether we go, um, I give women, all women that are low risk the um, choice between the National Institute of Clinical Excellency um, antenatal appointment guidelines, um, which does um, advocate for a, a reduced amount of um, visits than um, the current model, the current um, schedule that is used a lot in both in New Zealand and around the world of the four weekly till 28 weeks, then two and then one kind of thing. And it definitely helps quite a bit. No text communications as well um, definitely reduces the immediate continuous expectation um, of some midwives and um, women in general that we are truly, yes we are 24 hour care as continuity midwives, 
but not for things that are non-emergency based. Text communications is that availability. I've got free, I've got free money, free texts, and that. Whereas phone calls, is women are actually actively making that decision to um, and responsibility to ring you. So, and I find that it is only for genuine things that women are ringing, and they often will self-discover their own not needs in um, non, um, you know issues of care kind of thing so yeah so again it helps with the empowerment as well so sorry i'm go i'll rush through this so again you can't give the best care if you don't care for yourself so strategies i incorporate into my own personal self-care um, practice of sustain sustainability and they include mindfulness and meditation again this doesn't have to be sitting down in silence kind of thing and sitting to a, tw a 20 minute um, you know, um, clearing your head of all my, you know, um, th thoughts and that. It's basically what you um, look to find your moment of peace, whether it's with a glass of wine or a coffee and things like that. But taking that time where you're not going to worry about the days and things. Mindfulness, again, too, is really, you know, really about being in the present moment. It's a therapeutic technique on being conscious and aware and just knowing that you know we don't have to solve the world in the next five minutes and you can just have that you know moment in time and appreciating the the little things emotional um physical fitness again too that can vary for everybody mine's probably still you know quite in the small um going on a vibration trainer going for a bit of a walk a bit of a swim certainly not hard out marathons is not my thing Emotional freedom technique is uh, another therapeutic um, mode, you know, mode really, where you can actually either use it yourself. And I've, um, I've actually utilised it in my midwifery practice for women um, quite often, um, whether for general everyday life or own anxieties, um, and have found that um, really helpful. And what it does is you can use it every day when you get up, and in moments where you can um, find that I'm just you know, needs clarity or moment of reducing tension or stress. And that um, incorporates um, a combined um, acupuncture in the form of acupressure, neurolinguistic neuro linguistic programming and thought therapy. And it can actually um, help stimulate the brain alpha waves as well too, so which is really good for, you know, things before exams or having to, you know, um, present, for example. Um, so yeah, that's really helpful. And you'll find your own things as well. Some um, midwives find knitting and things like that helpful. Um, and there's lots of research that shows that helps reduce depression and, and that. And you'll find your mode. So, midwives supporting students, sustainability of the mid mid future midwifery population. Debrief often. I can't emphasize this off en enough. So, I know that with a really increased workload, we sometimes put this on the back burner. But it's actually one of the most important things to do and do it on a regular basis. So set up those meetings and just even, you know, it's a casual chat, but it really gives that chance to reduce those stress levels and get that clarity and share ideas. So be mindful of giving a balanced view of midwifery. Exposure to a constant negative stream of comments about midwifery to midwifery students can have a profound impact. Comments from students exposed to our culture of high negativity are voiced doubting their own abilities and beliefs of midwifery being a long-term career option for them. And I, ha you know, I have seen this on a, a number of occasions and it has both in the short and long-term um, um, incidences had doubts and you know, impacts on um, either students going into midwifery um, retaining their current um, status or actually staying in the um, career long term, you know, within that, you know, um, lifespan of what they thought they were going to do. And yeah, I mean, so just being mindful of really having that balanced view, a lot more positivity than the negative and the realism. Share your experiences of challenging times with realism and problem solving. So encouraging students to identify their own coping strategies and the things that they find help them through those tough moments and the positive things. Midwives first year of practice have a 
clear place uh, plan in place on how you want to practice. So hours, caseload, you know, caseloads and that for independent midwives and um, rosters for um, midwives that are planning on going to the hospitals and birthing units. So, um, you know, the common thing is do a maximum of eight shifts in two weeks for hospital uh, midwives and really avoid saying yes to overtime, particularly in those uh, that first year. Um, for caseloading midwives, it is quite common for midwives coming out, taking in a higher number of women that are on the high risk side of it. And again, going in and starting as a means to go on, getting a clear question question um, sheet in that when you ask women for at the interviews, when you're interviewing them and, and vice versa, really getting a picture of, you know, is her, you know, is this um, the, the number of women that I can take for this month kind of thing based on acuity. So um, if so you may be finding that you're actually not available for some women based on their needs because of the work-life balance that you're needing to keep as well, rather than the saying yes, you know, we need to say no more often sometimes. And that includes to other midwifery colleagues and mentors that are often trying to help us get a caseload, but sometimes we're getting a bit too built up number-wise and, you know, stresses can be increased in that. So yeah, it's just bearing in mind that side of it. Again, too, creating a healthy self-care plan yourself for both professional and um, and your personal schedule and again we discussed that earlier you know both sides you know by both sides of things your personal lives how you're going to keep yourself as well and the professional side and the first year of practices um mentorship in new zealand we have, have to yep. wrap up in a second yep. it's a question so getting a mentor yourself or going on to a relevant program so yeah they're available um in new zealand and around many countries around the world Sorry, I'm not went to a bit slow. Um, education institu institutions. Um, I find that it would be quite beneficial beneficial to do a lot more um, on sustainability in our educational um, courses, kind of thing, and also including things like the healthy financial planning um, in uh, our personal lives, how we're going to sustain, sustain workloads, um, living in particular areas, you know, high urban um, cost of living can be a lot higher, particularly if you're an LMC midwife, and what that's really going to entail and in relation to your workload and that. Again, course modules on maintaining self-care and healthy coping. Multiple um, platforms for support, things like um, Facebook um, groups, whether um, as, with lecturers and also um, you know alone and also two to suit the midwives we know that we sometimes have different learning abilities visual helps some writing helps some so really you know making it multi-dimensional to suit um, everyone activate the activist every time a woman stands up for herself we are actually fighting for ourselves our woman and the whole community as a whole and by in a by that too, it is on a daily basis, like Karen was saying, and it is not just leaving it up to the main spokespeople. Everybody needs to be part of it. And the thing is keeping that momentum going. So being part of policies, you know, well woman research and everything like that. Midwifery is one of the most people-centered careers, and we transform health. So we can help reduce women's, babies, and everything's comorbidities over their lifespan by simply, oh, sorry, I've gone too far, by helping you know, build and sustain ourselves and helping empower women and babies to having the best life, you know, best life they can. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. That was very interesting. So we did have a question earlier. Yeah. 
that is there any research out there um, about text communications with clients because it is the culture certainly of young midwives and of uh, many clients Yes, um, in New Zealand, our own Midwifery Council um, has quite a clear policy um, that it recommends or actually um, discusses that it is not a professional midwifery um, practice that we should be um, doing as midwives um, for various reasons that it can provide a platform where you can have miscommunication on both sides of things, um, not just in the area of delays in receiving um, texts, but actually in um, the events that things can be read as a non-essential, non-emergency case or vice versa, um, and that it is not a mode of proper assessment um, because you're often getting a very narrow picture. The, the, there is a way to combat this as well. Some midwives find that they have um, in place like an 0800 free call system for um, women that don't have that money on their phone. Um, again, too, there is, that works for some midwives, it doesn't for others. What you can also do is you can um, say to a woman, just keep a dollar or two uh, available money on your phone at all times. And if you can't afford, ring me, ring me for so many hang, you know, rings hang up, ring again, you know, hang up, and then I will ring you back. And that's for women that you know that do have that financial deprivation. Again, too, it's about promoting that responsibility for midwives um, to women that they are indeed parents from the day of conception, and they do have that responsibility there. And it does help their confidence in that as well, too, that, hey, you know, you've got to have some money on your phone at all times. Um, or have the access to a phone where you can ring because after the event you can have a baby that needs you know assistance you know in the same aspect and you need you know throughout their lifespan you know as the child you're going to have need to have money on your phone money on yourself at all times so it's a way of setting them up as well too you know yeah, um, yeah. So yeah. And, and Celine was wondering whether that was a policy of the, of the College of Midwives I think it sounds like quite an interesting uh, prospective research area um, mm. to what the communication is between um, women and their midwives via, via text. Um, so yeah, but was that a policy from the College of Midwives? It's actually um, from the Midwifery Council of New Zealand who um, are our um, governing bodies and provide our practicing certificates and keeping us safe. Great, right, thank um, you. Are there any other questions out there? So they strongly discourage it. It definitely still is in practice, but um, yeah, um, there is okay. they've clearly yeah. brought it out. Thank you. Okay, so the next session is starting in 10 minutes. I'm just going to wrap up now and just go through the final um, bits. Thank you very much for Tammy Heap. That was very interesting and a great overview of um,